Hey everyone, welcome back to a brand new video. My name is Kyron from No BS Crypto. Today is gonna to be a really quick video in regards to my 2022-2023 cryptocurrency bear market investment series. It's always a really big mouthful trying to say all that. So today's video, we're gonna be covering some basic topics. However, there's gonna be some tips and tricks embedded in this video that a lot of you experts should know, especially if you are following my series. So we're gonna be covering how to create five non-custodial accounts or wallets in MetaMask, one centralized exchange account in Binance, and I'm gonna require a little bit of work from you guys to go ahead and create one new bank account in whatever country you're living in. So with that being said, there's not much more else I need to say. Let's get straight into the video. So the first thing you're gonna to have to do is learn how to create not only a Binance account, but also create a MetaMask account. Now, I'm not gonna go into how to do that in this particular video because my videos always go for over half an hour and I don't want this to be another one. So I've got some very, very simple videos on, uh, I think some of my first videos explain how to create a MetaMask account and how to create a Binance account. I believe it's my third and my fourth video or fifth video. So just bear with me through my monotone voice, but uh, I've explained it once, I don't wanna have to do it again, okay? Um, now. Once you have gone and created a MetaMask account, we'll start with that. So of course, first things first, if you haven't already, write down your seed phrase multiple places, okay? Um, I just wanna say that for the record. Now, you're gonna only have one account. So if so, typically you'll, you'll find that up the top right hand corner here is where you'll be able to access your MetaMask account. Press that and then press these three dots and then press expanded view. Okay, you don't have to, but that's what I would recommend to set these up. So you're gonna come up to a page like this. Now, again, we'll jump back in here. So you're gonna to have to set up every account according to your risk portfolio. So in my case, I have five, one for my cash reserves and one for each risk uh, profile, okay? So just ignore the account one and the, uh, this one here. These are my uh, test dummy accounts I've done in previous and previous videos, but you'll pretty much have one account already, that'll probably just be called account one, like this one. And you'll have to go in there and change a name. So you can simply edit the account name by going back up to these three dots, hitting uh, account details, and simply this button here, and then changing it. Now, I would go through and do what I've done here. So in the case you've, you've gonna put, um, say 10% in for the high risk, high reward, uh, you'd go high risk, comma, extremely high reward or just high reward. And you make sure you put in the percentage you're allocating into that section. If you don't know where to get the percentage from, again, go back, watch my previous video on creating a risk portfolio and you'll know exactly where that number comes from, okay? So go ahead and do that for every single one of your accounts. So you do that. Now you won't have any more accounts. So you just pretty much hit create account and obviously you wouldn't have a kid have account two there. You just go on and do the same thing. So you go mid risk, high reward and then you'd put in for, for me that 75 percent and you hit create now i don't want a ninth account but that's what you would do again re repeating myself but you would go through and do that for every single one of the accounts you have created okay now once you've done it for every single risk profile you're going to have to do one for your cash reserves as well so of course this is where we're going to keep 10 percent of our cash reserves at all times just in case of a black swan event or an equally uh advantageous position we can invest in the markets and that's where you would go ahead and use this now this is also where you want to keep um 10 of your weekly dca as well just obviously so you've got more money off on the side just in case that happens it's very important we do this okay Regardless, if you want to put 100% of your money in the higher risk or, well, 90%, always have that 10% in your cash reserves. You'll thank me later. Now, once that's done, once you've created a, an account for all of these particular tokens, I'm on the smart channel, should be on the Ethereum network, that's my fault. Um, you're going to have to do, you're going to have to add in uh, whatever, whatever token or stable coin you are looking to purchase and hold. So in my case, I stand by USDC. Some of you want to use BUSD, some of you like Tether, so you use USDT, whatever it may be. Pick a stable coin and use that stable coin. So I to import USDC, or let's just say I want to import USDT now, go import tokens. Then type in USDT. Yep. USDT. I've got a new keyboard, so it's kind of hard getting used to it. Whew. There we go. So USDT, hit next and hit import. The reason we've got to go through and import the tokens is because as you saw, 
they won't show on this particular list unless we manually tell it. If you've transferred from Binance, which I'm gonna show you in a second, USDT into this particular wallet, it will not show. The balance will be there, the coins will be there, but you will not know they're in there based off not being able to see it. So you've got to go through and import the tokens. And I suggest you do that every single time when you buy a new project, go ahead and do that because you, there's a chance you'll forget about it and you will forget you have any money in that particular project, okay? So, so we've done that. Now you have to go through every single one of these accounts and do the same thing. So in this case, you'd have to go through, hit import tokens, again, USDT. Now, in the case, for whatever reason, you're using a, uh, let's just say a really, really low market cap um, stable coin, or it's a stable coin that isn't gonna show on this list. For example, let's just say I had one called KUSD, which is Kyron USD. It's not showing. Well, what do you do? So we've got a coin market cap. We'd then scroll down until we found whatever project or stable coin we wanna use. Let's just say it's Binance USD. And then you wanna make sure that you have it on the right network. So since we're using the Ethereum network up the top here, you would have to make sure that you found the BUSD on the Ethereum network, which is this one. So copy that. Some of the time it'll just have it on here, the main contract address. And all we do is just get rid of that and control V, enter. It would come up, Binance USD, next, import tokens. Now that's the second way you can import tokens. So whatever sort of stable coin you're using, again, I'm using USDC, so it's very easy just to type it all in there, okay? But again, you've gone through, now you've done that for every single project. That's great. Now we've got that you should have ETH and you should only have one stable coin. Well, now we've got two things we need to do. One is to figure out how we're gonna get the gas fees on to MetaMask, because if you don't know, you need gas fees to pay for transactions on any network, especially Ethereum. And the second thing is, how are we gonna, how are we gonna transfer our stable coins onto here? Well, that's where Binance comes into the equation. So Binance, again, is like what I've been telling people, it's like the sort of the brains of the operation. It's where we kind of send our fiat money from our, you know, wherever we get paid, our bank account, and then we disperse that accordingly to whatever risk profile account we want to invest in. So uh, in my case, now again, I'm not gonna go ahead and show you how to do this in and out. Um, there's videos for that already online, but for the most part, I like to use the fiat and spot homepage. Now, the first thing you want to do is obviously deposit your fiat. So if you remember, um, in my in my example, I am investing $15,000 um, into cryptocurrency straight away. And that's pretty much immediate investable income. Okay, so I have that in my account right now. And let's just say I wanted to go ahead and do that. So I would find my uh, dollar amount, I'd find my currency. Now, if you're not on this page after clicking um, so I just want to show everyone because I know every it's confusing for people who haven't experienced this before or used Binance before. So if you did click deposit on this Fiat and Spot page here, and it doesn't come up with the Fiat deposit screen, um, there should be deposit um, Fiat in the top right hand corner up here. Rather than deposit crypto, it should say deposit Fiat and just click that, okay? Um, so Australian dollars, cool. Uh, we're gonna go for the free fee option continue and it's very simple i mean anyone can do this you just put in how much so for me i would put in fifteen thousand dollars hit continue when you hit continue there will be an email address or an equivalent sort of way you can send money onto binance from whatever native currency your bank you're using okay typically it normally it is normally instant but however there are instances of your first deposit being up to 24 hour waiting period so just keep in mind sometimes it may not go through if you haven't used binance before immediately okay so let's just say i've done that i've deposited my fifteen thousand dollars into binance sweet um my, my internet's going really slow at the moment because i'm uploading a video but let's just say this here had fifteen thousand it went through okay well now we need to buy usdc of course now here's the thing before we continue when we buy usdc say that fifteen thousand dollars of mine was every single drop in my account that i was willing to put into crypto we need to remember that we need that gas money that i spoke to you about before that ethereum native gas to be able to pay for the transactions so we need some eth Right now, if that fifteen thousand dollars was all I had in my account, I would obviously need to then buy some Ethereum to be able to transfer the money once it's in MetaMask to purchase projects. So, how do I do that? Well, it's pretty simple, really. The first thing I'm going to want to do, regardless, is to purchase 
stablecoin. That's the best thing to do. So how do I do that? Well, go to markets, then go to whatever stablecoin you want, but it doesn't really matter because we're gonna be able to manipulate the ticker once we're on the market page. So let's just say USDC, BUSD. Well, I'm not using BUSD to buy USDC. I'm using my Aussie dollars. So AUD, I'll type in and find where it has AUD, USDC. Cool, press that. Now, I'm not gonna go over limit orders with everyone. Um, it's it's too much to go through. So I'm just gonna go through the market order. Now, market order, be careful. There's a magic word called slippage that can occur in this case, especially if you're buying large amounts. But again, I'm not going to go through that. So regardless, since we are technically selling our Australian dollars and we're purchasing USDC, we'd go under the sell and we'd type in 15,000, okay? And you can use the slider as well. Slide that over to 100% in that case and you'll sell your Australian dollars for USDC. So we're selling AUD, we're purchasing USDC, okay? And in that case, once we execute that order, once we hit sell, because we're under market at the top left hand corner here, it will instantly fill depending on uh, these particular sell orders here. Okay, so then we go back to fiat and spot once we have done that. Cool, sweet. So down the bottom here, as you can sort of see on my screen, you will have USDC here at the very, very top and it would tell you whatever the equivalent of how much you've purchased. So in this case, it'd be more or less 11,000 USDC, you know, considering there is a conversion. Um, so the 11,000 USDC will equal my 15,000. So what we need to do now is again, purchase that gas. So what I would recommend you do again is hit the markets tab and Take a mental note of how much you're willing to spend on gas. Typically, I would argue that the average Ethereum transaction is between 10 and $20 US dollars. So just remember that, like if you're gonna be purchasing projects, you know, quite often, to just be aware that it can come up to a few hundred dollars a month. Now, if you're not comfortable with spending a couple hundred dollars a month in purchasing transactions via a decentralized exchange through a non-custodial account like MetaMask, you may be wanting to, for example, uh, purchase it on a centralized exchange like Binance and then send it over to MetaMask as well. That is completely okay. But again, there's a lot of complexities in that. I'm kind of more so needing you guys to go and do a bit of research yourself if you don't already know what that is. But by all means, if you are new to the space and you're confused, please DM me on Twitter. The link's in the description. DM me, ask me how to do it. I might, I might give you a quick call and we can go through it yourself. Like seriously, there's no problem in you asking me that question. Now, uh, so we need to buy Ethereum. So we'll hit trade on Ethereum. Now, it's probably not gonna come up with what we want. So we want ETH USDC, not BUSD. Unless of course you are using BUSD. So let's go type in ETH at the top here and find where it says USDC. Here we go. So same principle applies. Since we're buying Ethereum because we, we have USDC, we would come down to market again. So we're, buying, we're using market, not limit orders. And we're gonna look at how much we're willing to, to spend on gas. Now, if you, in my case, I'm putting $15,000 up to actually use as investment. I'm gonna have an extra 500 Australian dollars on the side, specifically just for gas fees. So technically, I mean, actually, um, before when we did the fiat conversion and we, you know, onboarded that 15,000, technically, I'm actually onboarding 15,500. But again, let's just keep it simple here. And let's just say I'm using it out of that 15,000. So I would more or less, whatever the conversion is, about 350 USDC would be more or less 500 Australian. And I would obviously type that in here. Um, and it would be more or less down a value about 6% or so. And then you just hit buy ETH. Again, it would buy you in at that market price straight away, which is all cool. So once you've done that, you should see a notification up here saying you've purchased that. Hit Fiat and Spot again. We'll go back to our pretty much our homepage and we'll be able to see two different things on here, okay? So you'll be able to see the USDC and the Ethereum amount at the very, very top section of this part down here. So it'll have USDC and below that it'll have ETH. Great, okay. So now we have how much we have want to invest in our, in our account and we have how much we want to use for gas in our account. What we do then is we'll hit, we want to, let's, let's just say we're going to send the, uh, the bulk of our money, the investment money. Hit withdrawal, okay. It'll come up on the crypto withdrawal screen. If it comes up with the fiat screen, just pretty much again up here, you'll have withdrawal crypto, hit that. It'll bring you up here. So we're, we're withdrawing USDC, okay. Now, the address we're gonna be using, we go back into MetaMask, and we're gonna in, uh, always deposit our weekly DCA or anything into our cash reserves account. So we'll hit cash reserves. 
Now we'll copy this up here. So this number is your address. And we're gonna need to take note of the first three numbers and letters, so OX7, maybe even 33, and then the last three, CE1. Also, remember, keep it on the Ethereum mainnet. If not, click up here and tap on the Ethereum mainnet. So then you wanna come back up here, paste in that, so OX733 and CE1. Cool, that is the correct address. If you did a mistype and you had an extra one in there, make sure you just correct it, okay? Network. Remember I said we're on the Ethereum network? Cool, well, it's ERC20, Ethereum network. Very important, if you hit the wrong network, you will send your money to the wrong place and it will probably get dissolved. Um, now, how much are we sending? Well, we're gonna be sending most likely the max. So in my case, it's not much, but in the real situation, it would look something like 15,010. The reason I put the extra 10 on there was because the network fee is typically $10 USDC every time you transfer um, out of USDC, okay? So there is a little fee involved um, and I am going to account for that, but in the case that you don't, you're just gonna get sent a little bit less than what you were hoping for, okay? And then you hit withdraw and then it will come up just, you know, clarification, you know, uh, send the code to your email address and also your phone number, put those in and it'll come up down the bottom here completed may take 5 20 minutes as long as that it goes through that's all that matters how can you tell well as long as you've got that usdc added in here it will eventually show if it hasn't shown after an hour um i would definitely get a little bit a little bit worried and just make sure especially in current times where there's no network congestion that maybe it could be a binance problem um, but let's not go down that road okay so just make sure you've done it right the first time now that we've done that hit coin we're gonna send the Ethereum gas now. So we'll hit, again, new keyboard, difficult. So fine, Ethereum, cool. Same principle, paste the same address in because we wanna send it to the exact same place, okay? Again, same network, nice and easy. So there is gonna be a small fee as well for these Ethereum, um, these Ethereum transactions, and it's 0 0.0012 ETH, so that's more or less, I think $10 or $20, okay? So again, you might have to account for that. I wouldn't be too concerned with this because it's only gas, okay? We're not talking exacts, we're not talking absolutes, we're just talking gas. So again, that's about 350 bucks for me. I would hit withdraw, go through the same thing again, enter in those verification numbers. Wait 15, 20 minutes, boom. It's gonna come up your Ethereum amount in here. So cool. What do we do now? Well, hit USDC, hit swap, Oh, sorry, not swap. Hit send and then press transfer between my accounts. Now here you'll be able to see one, two, three, four, five. Again, ignore the top two and the bottom account for me. And you'd pretty much go through and you'd divide it up accordingly. Now, if you remember from my previous videos where I spoke about your percentages, you would know how much to send into each address. So taking it back to this video, you would know initial cast dispersal how much you have to send to each different one. So for me, cash reserves keep 3,500. Uh, in this one, 1,000, 23,000, and 3,000. I've used different numbers, so just ignore the totals there, but this will tell you exactly how much you have to keep or send to the different addresses, okay? So once you go ahead and do that, a little bit tedious, I know, but it will save you a little bit of money rather than sending, uh, rather than doing this process here for every single address you have on MetaMask, because you'll notice 0x733CE1, if we go ahead and change that to the extremely high risk, it'll change. So every one of your accounts has a different address. If you were to do that on Binance, you imagine paying this network fee on Ethereum plus on the USDC, you're looking at spending a couple hundred dollars a month uh, in fees for absolutely no reason, okay? This is gonna save you a lot of money. Yes, it's still gonna cost you money. However, it's part of the game, okay? So once that's done, again, you'll have in every single one of your accounts here, you're gonna have all of these topped up, not only with ETH, but also the correct amount of initial investment in whatever stable coin you have. Then, what we need to do is remember, every week or every month, whatever you're comfortable with spending a little bit of money in network fees on, we're gonna to have to DCA, okay? So, we do the exact same process. I recommend keeping to one address. That's why I recommend keeping it to the cash reserves, because if something happens, at least you know it's in cash reserves rather than being it mixed up with, you know, 75% of your portfolio in the mid risk, for example. So keep it in cash reserves, like your savings account. Transfer on a weekly basis 
into this account and you mainly only really have to send in uh, your investment uh, DCA capital, which is this over to the side here. So you don't have to put in any of your gas unless obviously you're running out of gas. Um, but in, in most cases, just simply put in this amount here. So the total of 500 you would send to, uh, to MetaMask and then from MetaMask you would divide that up like you've done here, okay? Now, one other thing is it's really imperative to make a non-custodial account for whatever network you are going to be purchasing a particular coin on because uh, centralized exchanges have a tendency to run slower, either limit or um, stop withdrawals or deposits completely over a bear market period or times of high volume or volatility. Um, and according to, I think, Sam Bankman-Fried, uh, some of the smaller exchanges are actually insolvent and we don't even know about that yet. They haven't actually released it. So it's never a good idea keeping money on a centralized exchange. So we want to create an account or a non-custodial wallet on multiple different sort of networks. So if you're using Solana, create one on the Solana network, whatever whatever wallet, wallet that may be, I think it's called the Solit. Um, or if you are someone that wants to purchase on an EVM compatible chain, uh, EVM compatible network, like Ethereum, Avalanche, Moon River, Moonbeam, Binance Smart Chain, go ahead and add it into MetaMask. Oh, obviously Solana is EVM compatible, but I'm just not entirely sure if they have uh, an available option on MetaMask yet. So you can add network down here and go through this process yourself. There's gonna be tutorials online on how to connect to the Binance Smart Chain. I think Moonbeam is already connected automatically nowadays to MetaMask, but also for Avalanche and things like that. So make sure you store it, not your keys, not your crypto. If Binance shut down tomorrow and you had all your crypto on Binance, there is nothing you can do. If you wanted to sell some of your you know, profitable project uh, on Binance, but they've limited that, then you're gonna miss out on potential rewards. That's why decentralized exchanges are always better, even though they technically are, are gonna cost you more on gas fees. So with that being said, guys, I mean, that's pretty much the video. I think uh, that should have given everyone a similar rundown on how this sort of operation works. Again, if you're a complete novice and you know nothing about what I was talking about, any of the markets, how to trade, what, what the hell even MetaMask is, you've got a little bit more to learn, go ahead, watch some of my earlier videos and go ahead and watch other people explain that to you as well. So thanks for watching guys. So the next video, we're gonna be looking at what I actually use in CoinMarketCap to help me track my different projects and how I kind of use that to uh, create my portfolio. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in that video, bye.